up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Doge Bag Poker Vlogs. I'm not dead. There are only so many poker vlogs of the Gardens Casino that I can make before I just can't any. I forgot to turn off the fan. We are in this beautiful room in Park MGM, probably one of my favorite hotel rooms I've been in. Here's a five-ish second tour of it. Courtesy of a very generous person. I just had dinner at, you can probably guess where. We are very close to Aria, which is one of the nicer poker rooms in Vegas, in my opinion. I've only been there like once or twice, but since I'm staying here, might as well go there since it's the closest option to me. So I'll be playing probably a pretty quick session there because I'm a little burnt out today after climbing to the top of a Chipotle. Do you want me to catch you? I'm okay, I'm okay. Okay, okay. God. Anyways, you guys have been waiting for a poker vlog for very long now, so I will try to make this a good session and uh, pray that I run good. From inside Park MGM, you're actually able to get to the Aria poker room without ever having to leave the building. So I decided to play at Aria. I get into the 2-5 game right away and buy it for 1500 as soon as I sat down, a player across the table asked if I was from LA and then from Tustin, and it turns out he was a viewer of the vlog, which was kind of surprising because ever since I ended the vlog and then brought it back, this has happened a lot less often, so pretty cool to have run into a viewer in my first session for the trip. He was super friendly and he asked not to be included in the vlog, so we'll just call him Mike. Big shout out to Mike. Early in the session, we get a premium. I've got ace-king offsuit in the hijack. We're playing six-handed. I open it to 20 and only get called by the small blind. The flop comes down 7 queen king. We've got top top here. The small blind checks it to me. I bet $15 and he actually check raises to 45. Obviously, I'm not going anywhere here and I don't see really a point in raising unless it was in a very specific situation against a specific player. So I make the call. When the turn brings the 10 of spades, it's uh, kind of a bad card because he could be... I don't know, check raising with like ace jack with the backdoor flush draw, something like that. He bets 75 and obviously I'm still going to call here. The river brings the jack of clubs. So we now have the nuts and uh, yeah, even if he did have ace jack, we're at least chopping. And this time he actually checks it over to me. So his hand seems pretty face up. I feel like he has to have something like king queen here or maybe like a flop set. And now he's just giving up because it was such a bad run out. Because of this, I have to bet pretty small because I'm not really going to get much value out of those hands. It's pretty obvious if I bet here that I have an ace, but I have to go for some value. So I make it $75, a tiny, tiny bet. And he actually tanks a little bit. So we could potentially get value from a two pair type hand apparently, but eventually he does make the fold. So good fold from him. We win a medium sized pot to start off the session. In this next one, we've got ace queen offsuit in the hijack. The early position player makes it 20. And this should be a clear three bet given that I'm not suited and, uh, you know, I'd rather have some fold equity. So I decide to call. The flop comes down 999. Nine, nine. The early position player puts out a C bet of $30. And I'm going to float here having the second nut nothing. So I make the call. The turn is a very good card for us. It's the queen of diamonds. So we now have a boat here. And we're only losing to kings, queens, aces, and uh, quads. My opponent puts out another bet of 35 this time, a little too small, and I decide to raise here to just try to get value right away. I am kind of screaming that I have a queen, but I decide to do that at the time. I make it $100. He ends up making the call, so we're now going to a river, which is the four of clubs, a complete blank. My opponent checks it to me, and I'm going to choose a bet sizing to target hands like jacks or pretty much any pocket pair below that that might call. So I make it 120 here, just a little over a third pot. He calls and shows that he had pocket 10s. I accidentally stopped the recording while picking up my phone to like record the board. But he asked if I had a queen. I said yes and I show and we win a nice little pot. We're on the button for this next one and we've got my favorite hand of all time, Jack King off. The hijack limps, I make it $25 from the button and the big blind and the limper call. Three ways to a flop of ace, king, 10. So we've got middle pair and a gut shot. And this is a type of board that's going to hit my range a ton. 
it checks to me and I actually decide to check back here, although I don't think betting is terrible, but I don't think I'm getting value from worse, so I'm just gonna take my showdown value and see what develops on the turn. And the turn brings the king of clubs, easy game, we hit trips here, it checks to me once again, I'm almost certain I'm good here. If my opponents are slow playing, it's the best slow play of all time. I bet $35 here, just about half pot, and only the hijack who's the limper calls. The river is the four of hearts, once again a blank on the river. And the hijack leads for $100, which is kind of weird, I don't know exactly what he's trying to rep here. If he has a super strong hand, I feel like I would have seen a raise on the turn or something, but no need to raise from me, I'm pretty sure I'm good. I make the call right away, and he shows an 8. I take a little bit too long to process that he can no longer have any hand that's possibly beating mine, and then I just show my hand, and of course he mucks. So we win a nice little pot with Jack King off, my favorite hand, and uh, yeah, session's still going pretty well so far. We once again have Jack King offsuit, this time in early position. The under the gun player limps, I make it $25, maybe a little loose, but I think we might have been shorthanded. There was a newish player at the table in the cutoff. He seemed like he had quite a bit to drink, and he tried to buy in with Baccarat chips that he had, and he wasn't allowed to do that, so there was this whole ordeal. So, anyways, signs point to him being a fun player to have at the table. He makes the call as well, and the limper also calls. So, three ways to a flop of 10 king 7 we've got top pair, okay kicker, the under the gun player checks, I put out a $45 c-bet, both players call, the turn brings an ace, and once the under the gun player checks to me, I think this is a spot where I should just check as well, because I just have like a middling showdown value-ish kind of hand, and against two players, probably don't want to be bloating the pot when I don't really know where I'm at, but for some reason, I decide to bet. I made it 125, and only the player in the cutoff calls, so the under the gun player folds, we're going to a river, which is the three of spades, and at this point, I do finally decide to slow down. I just check it to my opponent, and I kind of just have a bluff catcher, so I don't want to be trying to go for value when I don't really know where I'm at. Unfortunately, the cutoff doesn't check back. He bets $200 here, and after thinking for a bit, I call mainly just because this is the Baccarat guy, which is how I'm going to refer to him from now on, and unfortunately, he shows us pocket sevens for a flop set so not exactly what i was expecting to see from this guy uh, played it pretty passively but he wins a decent sized pot against me and can't really complain given how i played the turn we lose several more hands that aren't super interesting but the stack dwindled down a bit still up a good amount though i've got pocket jacks in under the gun i make it 20 dollars and i get four callers so we're going to a flop always a scary situation to be in with Pocket Jacks multi-way, but it comes pretty safe once again. It's 877 with two clubs. I do have the Jack of Clubs. The player in the big blind checks. Action's on me, and I make it $55. Everybody folds back to the big blind who initially checked, and he now check raises to $180. And it's kind of an annoying spot. I think I could very easily just fold this and be fine with it. Uh, looks pretty strong from him, but I guess I just couldn't find the fold button, and after thinking for a bit, I decide to call, but this is never going to be a fun situation. I don't think any card besides a jack is going to make me feel better, and I'm probably just going to face more aggression, so it probably should just be a fold on the flop. The turn brings the eight of spades, so board is now double paired, and the big blind now checks it to me, which is kind of strange. I feel like he should be um, betting here if he does have a boat, which is what he's repping, but maybe he's worried about an eight or something. I'm not really sure, or he's just giving up on a bluff. I think about betting for whatever reason, that's what it said in my notes, but I do eventually decide to just check back. And the river, guys, is a decent card for us. It's another 8, so there is now a boat on the board, and if he did have a 7, we're actually now winning. So, really good situation, actually, especially when my opponent checks, so we're pretty much certainly ahead here. I bet 175 here. The big blind just says, you got lucky, and pretty much folds right away after showing that he had 7-6 of spades. So, yeah, that's the beautiful thing about poker, guys. You don't have to play amazingly to win some decent-sized hands, because I definitely have not been playing too well, and we're still kind of winning. So, good run out for us, and again, we win another medium-large-ish size pot.
Once again, guys, I'm only playing premiums this session. I decided I'm just just playing premiums. It's the first day. I got to win. So I have Ace King of Hearts on the button in this next hand. The under the gun player who is the Bakara guy limps. I make it 25 and the player in the big blind who seems like a solid reg makes the call. And so does the limper. So we're going to a flop three ways. Ace, queen, deuce, guys. We've got top, top. Checks to me and I bet $30. Only the player in the big blind calls. Once again, he seems like a reg. The turn is another queen, the queen of spades this time. He checks it over to me once again. I'm still going to go for value. I make it 80 here. He calls once again. The river is the queen of clubs. Guys, we got another boat on the river. Can't get much better than this. And we are now only losing two quads. Well, I guess he could have aces, but he doesn't. So the big blind checks it over to me. I decide against this player... I'm going to go for an overbet. I think he kind of can tell I'm capable of making a play here. And I also want it to be a little funny. We're trying to have fun here. As you can see, I didn't play very well today. We're just trying to make content. So I count out a bet of 369 and put it out there, knowing full well that it's going to be counted as 370 since you're supposed to only bet in increments of five here. And I know my opponent knows that as well. So don't worry, guys. This isn't like an angle. And also it's a $1 difference. Anyways, he decides to fold, and this is the last interesting-ish, I guess not even that interesting, hand for the session, but I included it because there is some funny table talk afterwards. Is it, is it 69 for some reason? Uh, is it some sexual message behind that grounder? Sexual? Sexual? Yeah, what? like, what do you like mean? with my bet I will f*** your hand or something? No, 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 no. No? Okay. Let's try again. Oh, nice. I got it. Where when did I go? landed, you would make a photo. <laughs> what is this? It's uh, my a uh, poker vlog, yeah. Poker vlog. What is your name? Uh, it's Dogebag. You know, like Dogecoin? Yeah. Yeah, it's like that, but Dogebag. Dogebag. Yeah. Never seen ever do it from Japan. Uh, no. Guess again. For China? Nope. For Albania? No, no I'm Asian. I'm Asian. You're, you're getting farther. Oh. Close. Close. Indonesia. What? Oh, still Southeast Asia. Yo, you get it the next next one. Yeah. Malaysia. Malaysia. Argentina. Oh no Argentina. no. Argentina. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's Russia. Oh, Russia. No no. He's out of Asian. Uh, Mongolia. No Southeast Ethiopia. Asia. Southeast Asia. Ah okay. Uh, North Africa. <laughs> Mostly was Philippines. Greece. No, Vietnamese. Vietnamese. Wow, how do we know against that? I know. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Have a good night. Bye, bye. Hi, how's it going? How are you? I'm good, thank you. Well, this is the other day, we get that time. So, Jalish, 17, 16.